recommendations from a three party fact finding panel um, and that the board's own negotiating team told us to bring it to our membership. So we honored their wishes. Um, and as you are aware of at this point in time, our membership overwhelmingly ratified it. Um, so the board ratifying the contract is important for staff morale. And during this week of teacher appreciation, I think it's a really great way to show your appreciation for your faculty. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments for tonight's agenda? I'll give it just a second. And I haven't seen any come in over the email. Okay. Um, moving on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, talk a little bit about enrollment. There's a way we could get that slide up. Great. Thank you. So each month I, can people see? Okay, there we go. Whoops. There we go. So enrollment, April enrollment, uh, as you can tell in the left-hand column are the schools. And then we go right into the April 1st enrollment compared to March 1st enrollment. And if you look at that white column with the numbers, the high schools at 986, down two students, again, comparing April 1st to March 1st, the middle school, we're at 703, up by two students. Wentworth, we're at 675, up with four students. Blue Point, 208, up with three students. And Eight Corners is 243. That's been the same. And then Pleasant Hill School, 206, and they're up one student. So the grand total is 3,021, a total of eight students in that month's time. If you go to the next column, which I would call yellow, we're going to compare September 1st enrollment to April 1st enrollment. And that's approximately about eight months ago. And if you look at the high school, we're at 988, up two students. Middle school, 698, up five students. Wentworth, 658, up 17 students. Blue Point, 200 students, up eight. Eight Corners, 242 students, up with one student. And Pleasant Hill, up uh, 205, up with one student. And so, in looking at those numbers, can that, can that scroll down a little bit? I don't know if that can. Whoop. I, I I'm going to try to show the bottom totals, but um, I can't read it on my screen on the bottom. I don't know if anybody can see that. I think, unfortunately, the screen share just blocks um, part of the slide. Well, what I wanted to also just talk about is, as you know, we have um, a person that looks at the demographics and does a study, and they provide the best guess fit for what they think our projections will be. And on the blue column, you'll see that it's very close to lined up with the first column, the April 1st versus March 1st enrollment. So um, we are continually to grow. Uh, we've grown up 30 students from last year and it's aligned with the research that we've done uh, 
on student enrollment. So that's Sandy, all I had to say about April enrollment. <clears throat> Sandy, I could I was able to pull up the bottom row if you want me to read it. That'd be great. Thank so you. the first column, April first versus March first is three thousand and twenty one students up eight students. The second column, the September versus April, is 2,991 students, which is plus 30. And the 2019 best fit model plus the high MFI is 3,003. Thank you, Alicia. You're welcome. Any questions? Otherwise, I'll go on to the next slide. Any luck on that? Yeah. Um, I think it's Kelly who is controlling the screen. Okay. Well, I don't know why it's not advancing. This is a calendar that we're trying to pull up as far as the changes. Any luck on that? Yeah. Um, I think it's Kelly who is controlling the screen. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why it's not advancing. Here we go. Okay. All right. So we mentioned that we'd be back. That's not the one you want. Hold on. Kelly, I've got some notes in front of me. I could just talk on the changes. Yeah, sure. I start with that, and then if it comes up, I'll go back over it again. So, as the public knows, we uh, have made some changes with the calendar, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, and we'll certainly get this on our website after tonight and get the word out to people. Um, so, what we've changed is May 22nd is going to be a student day. Originally on the calendar, we had that as a workshop day for our teachers, but obviously that's not going to work given the social distancing rules that we have. So we're recommending May 22nd to be a student day. And then June 10th would be the last student day. Again, the last student day would be June 10th. On June 11th and 12th, what we would do is have workshop days. Um, and that would be for the staff. So to bring the year end to an end. There we go. So June 11th and 12th would be workshop days. And then June 15th through the 18th, what we're recommending is to take those teacher days and put them into August. And so August 25th through the 28th would be the workshop days. And the reason we're doing that is we anticipate some changes given what we're going through with how school needs to be done. And it's sort of the unknown right now, but we know that we're going to have some trainings for our staff. We're going to have to look at some type of social distancing. 
uh, hygiene protocols will need to be a priority. Uh, certainly our nursing staff will have some in-service opportunities for us. So we just felt that those four days would be very useful for staff. And just to be mindful, typically the staff has trainings through that time of year anyway, and it would be nice for them to have some time to get their classrooms up and running since they really haven't had that time uh, in the spring. So again, let me repeat, May 22nd would be a student day. June 10th is the last student day of the year. June 11th and 12th will be workshop days for the staff to close out the school year. And June 15th to the 18th, we're recommending to take those four days and put them into August for our teachers in the service time. And again, we'll post that, make sure people have that so they can uh, look it up and keep it, keep track of it. Uh, we don't expect you to remember that tonight, but we'll get the word out on that. I'm gonna move on unless there's any questions. So the next. Okay. Yeah. Oops, sorry, Tandy, I think, yeah, man, I have a question. Um, Tandy, can you just talk to sort of how you guys came to that decision, what sort of uh, input was involved and how it relates to what other districts are doing as well? You know, every district probably has a little different bent to what they're doing, but um, certainly one of our um, occurrences that we connect with Diane and I is through the Cumberland County Superintendents Group. And I would say that generally speaking, this is probably more similar than different. Um, probably what's a little different and other districts that I'm aware of is the four floating days to take those from June and put them into August. I'm not aware of anybody else doing that, but um, I would say generally speaking, the last student day is early June for most districts. And um, I think it's probably more similar than different. Diane, I don't know, you might have insights on that. If you wanna add anything, feel free. Yeah, no, I, I would, you know, concur with what Sandy said. Um, it is interesting. I, I think that was a recommendation that the, the state had floated out to us in regards to um, being mindful of the time that teachers may need in the fall as um, we move on to the next stage of learning as it relates to the pandemic that we've been experiencing. Um, I would also add that we have um, met and uh, discussed this with the Scarborough Education Association. Um, we had floated this idea by them last week and we talked about it a little bit more this week. And so we've really been mindful in getting staff um, input uh, from the association to see if this was something that people mm -hmm. thought would be helpful. And I think that overwhelmingly um, people recognize the time that's going to be needed to prepare for the fall. Thank you. Hillary. You're on mute. Sorry. Um, I can't find my little blue hand for some reason I'm using my husband's computer and it's a different format slightly. Um, but I just wanted to, I, I really like the idea of floating the four contract days um, to August because I think that there's definitely gonna be a need for um, increased time during, during that time for all the reasons you said. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, I guess I'm a little, I'm just wondering, like so there are some other, um, schools in Cumberland County that I know that their last day was going to be June 12th, but their last day of distance learning was going to be June 5th so that teachers had that full week to connect with students who had missing work and to close out um, the school year. Is that something that you considered? 
I, did, I just, I'm, I'm aware of all the, the teachers who, ca who came to our last meeting and talked about the time that they would need at the end of the year. And I just want to make sure that two days is enough. I, 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 I just, I had heard that another district in Cumberland County was, was doing it the way I just described and it sounded reasonable to me. So as we're consider as we're considering this proposal, um, the high school has been working on a uh, proposal that would uh, be not that dissimilar to what happens every year. For example, um, having instruction end a little bit sooner for seniors, making sure that there's a window of time for them to complete the work that they need for their courses, and then um, in a similar fashion for other students. So it's not necessarily about um, the instruction per ending per se. I think that um, it might be that new learning might end um, prior to that very last day of school, but there would be a building in of time during that last week or so for kids to be wrapping up the things that, um, that folks were expecting from them. Okay, so I, I fully support that, but I think that this doesn't address that. And I think that, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. This does address it, but it doesn't let people know that that's what we're planning. And I think in terms of parents who are homeschooling and, and, um, and for teachers to be able to plan their time, I think it would be a good idea for us to um, just let people know when the last day of, of new learning is going to be, I guess. Does that make sense? It does. And we can certainly clarify that. Okay. Thank Max? You. Other thoughts? Do, do we know if there's going to be a designated time for high school students to go back into the school before June 10th, or is that going to be later into the summer? So Todd and Ms. Ketch, Todd Jepson and Ms. Ketch are actually working on a plan for that right now. Okay. Um, currently, the schools are allowing teachers back in to get things that they needed for this final stretch of learning. Um, but I was in a meeting this morning at eight o'clock wherein we were discussing um, setting the parameters for students to go back in and get the things that they need. And so um, that will be rolled out um, as soon as they get that structure in place. They want to make sure that as they're inviting students back in to get their things, that they're also doing it in a way that keeps all of the safety protocols in mind and social distancing and um, making sure that we're keeping everybody safe and healthy. Perfect. Thank you. Felicia? Thank you. I, um, I love the concept because I think that those days will be put to better use to prepare for next year, but I just want to reconfirm that what I heard you say is that was um, vetted. I'm just worried about people that have plans, that um, staff that have plans and have relied on the schedule um, for the August days at least. Yes, it was vetted with the association. Okay, thank you. Any other thoughts? Okay, uh, let's go on to the next slide. I'd like to talk uh, about the middle school principals search. And we had a great group of people working with uh, central office on finding a candidate. And I have a, there should be a slide that shows the process that we used. But basically, we had the interview committee and they looked at, um, I think, 20 people applied. And we actually looked at five candidates and we interviewed three of those candidates, I believe. Uh, let's see. So let me stop on the step one. We put in the poll and press Herald and servantschools.com, advertise. Step two was an opportunity to uh, have an interview committee made up of staff, administrators, and parents. 
we come together and we screened the applicants. Uh, there were 20 total and we reviewed and interviewed uh, the questions that we were going to ask the candidates and had a pre-interview session with the interview committee just to make sure everybody's aware of what the steps are and what's required. And then step six was the first round of interviews. We interviewed five people. Then we had a second round of interviews and three people were selected. However, one candidate dropped out, so we're down to two. And then step eight, uh, Diane and myself interviewed the uh, two candidates, the finalists. And I'm pleased tonight to um, make a recommendation. And I'm just going to pull up my computer here for a minute. Okay. So, based upon board approval tonight, I am pleased to recommend that Kathy Terrell be appointed by the Board of Education as a new principal of Scarborough Middle School. I'd like to give a little background on Kathy. Mrs. Terrell has been a dedicated and passionate staff member of Scarborough Schools since 1989. She started her career at the middle school as a math and science teacher. She had also had the roles of instructional mathematics coach at the middle school, district improvement strategist, and most recently, she has been the interim principal at the middle school. Kathy possesses strong organizational and collaborative leadership qualities, facilitation and coaching skills, school improvement and data analysis skills, and knowledge of curriculum instruction and assessment. She also has excellent skills in communicating and collaborating with colleagues, parents, and students, and is committed to ongoing personal and professional growth. We are very excited for Kathy to continue her work as a leader of the middle school based on board's recommendation and approval. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we'll be bringing that up in our new business for the appointment. Yep. All right. Moving into the chair's report. Um, there'll be a couple pieces with this. First, um, during this Teacher Appreciation Week, I really want to take a moment to thank our professional staff, um, not only for educating future generations, but, all, but for all the little things you do every single day. Those personal connections you make, those important life lessons you are able to instill and the empathy in which you interact with your students. I had wondered as distant lear distance learning kicked off, would these non-academic moments be lost in the process, but you've proven that space is not an obstacle. Instead, you've coached your students to be even more resilient, thinking outside the box, accepting personal accountability for their actions, even when there's a potential and definite uh, negative consequences. Big extra thanks, uh, Ms. Neal, for this and more importantly, to become the teacher themselves. I'd like to share a clip that was uh, forwarded to the board this week that one of our Wentworth students created to help an administrator with a file sharing violation they had. His use of technology, along with the attention to detail and outlining each step to fix the issue and the kindness that he showed proves that learning is definitely a two-way street. Kelly, I think you're on mute. So import a video as shown here. You have to click this little tiny switch to, and it says mark as public and that should fix the problem. Um, big thanks for that. Um, it really did it warmed my heart to see a youngster doing this. Um, can we play it again? Teachers, and, can we, uh, 
thank each of you. Yeah, I think we should. Just in case if he and his family are watching it, I mean, it was such a great, a great moment. I would love, I would hate for him to miss it. Sorry about that. I'll play and everybody else. Thank you. Okay, so for this morning's daily announcements, the link right here for a wee video, it does not work. You do not have access to this media. I think I know what the problem is for this. Yeah, the other link does it too. When you import a video, as shown here, you have to click this little tiny switch to, and it says mark as public, and that should fix the problem. Thank you. I, I just love that. Um, that really does showcase all the things that each of you do each day. Um, so thank you to each of our teachers for being the reason our district rises to the top each year. I really wish we could have acknowledged you in person um, for what you do this week, but we do appreciate you and look forward to next year uh, being all together again. All right. And I know that if if um, IT is not available, Mrs. Crosby knows who to call now. <laughs> I was say I know who to call for my yeah. future needs. <laughs> All right, moving into student representative reports. All right, so it's a little bit hard for Max and I to do our student reports. Student reports is obviously. None of us are in in-person school, but we did our best. So the Key Club has found a way to hold their virtual elections, which was on May 4th. So they asked all the candidates to post their speeches onto Google Classroom, and then the Key Club members could go in and watch the speeches and then vote for who they thought was the best candidate. And also for Teacher Appreciation Week, they asked um, all the Key Club members to reach out to their favorite teachers and to share the impact that they had on them. And then as you can see in that picture, that shows all the key club officers for the next year. So congratulations to all those people. Um, Red Storm Sports, they've been posting reminders on their Twitter to remind students to get outside and get active during this time of quarantine. As you can see from this reminder, they wanted kids to step back from their screens and make sure they go outside for either a walk or a run just to get their steps in. So Jacob Lewis has found a fun way to celebrate Scarborough's graduating seniors while maintaining social distance. So he's been going to seniors' houses and taking pictures of them on their front doorstep um, and then asking them a couple questions which he's been posting on Instagram. So we asked them, what they're missing about senior year, what have they been doing besides their schoolwork, and what are they looking forward to doing in college? And he even took my picture. <laughs> so I was to my front doorstep a couple days ago, and you take a picture of in your college sweatshirt, your senior shirt, and then your like everyday outfit. <laughs> Kristen, where did you say he's posting these? He's posting on his Instagram. It's Jacob Lewis Media. So he's done a bunch of different senior profiles. They're really cute. And then Red Storm Sports has also found a way to recognize seniors who have missed their spring season due to coronavirus. Um, they've been posting kind of similar write-ups with seniors senior photos um, just to celebrate their academic and athletic achievements. All right, so like Kristen said, it's kind of hard for me to find things to talk about since you know people aren't actually like in the buildings, but I did find one thing to talk about, which I think is pretty nice. Uh, the Wentworth faculty, they compiled a video to wish their students well at home. The same thing was done at the high school as well. And I just thought that was really nice. I felt really like connected to my teachers. I like, got to see inside their houses, which was kind of weird, but like, you know, it, it, it was just, it was really nice to be able to see them. 
And then at the primary schools and at Wentworth, there have also been daily announcements sent out that are read by students at the school. I know my sister, she goes to Pleasant Hill and she did that. So it's really fun for the students to still get to see each other's faces when they're not at school. So yeah, that's everything. Awesome, thank you. Moving into committee reports. First up is communications. The communications committee has been working really hard um, to try and make sure that the community still feels connected to us and to the work that we're doing. Um, the joint communications committee met last Friday and we had a very um, successful meeting. There was a lot of ideas um, put forward and we have decided to do kind of a multifaceted launch day of some of our budget information. Um, and so we're going to try and hit as many of our um, points of contact as we possibly can all on the 15th. And so uh, Sarah as our finance chair and Peter Hayes as finance chair for the town council have graciously agreed to um, do a kickoff video. Uh, and then I have also asked each member of the board to also choose a budget vocabulary word and to make a short video. Uh, the town has a uh, intern who will be helping us put those videos together into something that hopefully is both informative and uh, engaging. And so in conjunction with the video series, uh, we also co-authored a In the Know article. Um, a big thank you to Chief Thurlow for giving us his space in the Scarborough Leader. Um, and that article was submitted today and it will be published also on the 15th. Um, and then that article will also appear in the town newsletter and um, it will be posted on the town website and on our website. So hopefully it will create some consistency with messaging um, and also be able to reach a broad audience considering not everybody who gets school communications um, gets the town communications and vice versa. Um, as far as just at our committee level, um, budget con communication will continue. I talked with the group the other day that I kind of view this as two phases. We have the time between first and second reading, which first reading was last night. Um, and then we'll have, so we'll have lots of meetings and um, not sure what budget outreach is gonna look like yet, but we'll have those kind of things to communicate between now and second reading. And then phase two is really second reading to referendum. And that's when we're kind of trying to get out the vote and make sure that people understand what's in the budget and what, and what the positive things are to go and support our budget. So um, those things will be coming along. Excellent, thank you. Finance? Uh, yeah, so um, we had a very productive, but very long, um, uh, finance committee meeting this afternoon. Um, so w uh, let me just kind of talk through the process and where we are, which I covered in the finance committee meeting, but for anyone who wasn't on that, I think it would be helpful to know sort of where we are in the overall process. Um, so the, although the board, uh, approved the first reading, seems like probably a month ago now at this point, um, the town council actually just held their first reading last night. Um, and what the their first reading was was basically a combination of the reduced or the reduced budget that the town and the superintendent the town manager and superintendent presented last week or two weeks ago now, um, which ultimately arrived at roughly like just under a two percent mill rate increase. Um, so anybody who's been following that is basically tier tier four for the school of all the tiers. Um, is what that amounts to. And so the next, uh, given that they approved that last night, the next steps in the process are um, between first and, and second reading, we're gonna be working as a board finance committee um, just to get questions answered like we did today. I think we, we asked a lot of questions about the overall budget. We asked some questions about the reductions in general. Um, and now it's kind of on us to come back and, and say, you know, talk through whether or not there are any changes that we would like to be to recommend to what was proposed um, and then in parallel to that there's a another recommendation or I guess request by town council for us to model what a zero percent budget increase would look like um, and I just want to be very clear that that's not a it wasn't a vote it wasn't a 
I guess it, they voted to have the workshop, but it wasn't a, it, a directive. It's not a goal. Um, it's really just a, a workshop to model and for people to see what that 0% would look like. So in a way, I think um, it may be beneficial uh, because people will see the drastic impact that a 0% would be for the school, um, for the district, and, and hopefully not be supportive of that. Um, so upcoming dates, um, we'll have another board meeting the week of the early, the week of the 18th or the 19th, all leading up to the workshop on the 20th. Um, we then have our public hearing on the 21st, um, and then our school board second reading is June 4th. And I guess the, the final comment I'll make, um, and, and one thing I wanted to put out there for the rest of the board for discussion is just around um, encouraging more feedback. I think uh, Alicia said this well in our finance committee meeting today, which is, you know, a lot of the um, decisions or recommendations that we make as finance committee members are based on feedback that we receive and comments that we receive from all, all sorts of people, parents, teachers, staff, and obviously the admin and the leadership council. Um, and so uh, I think there's an opportunity for us to, there's, we're always open and willing to be getting to receiving feedback. Um, but I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for us to be a little bit more proactive about seeking that feedback from teachers specifically um, about some of the cuts. And I wanted, it was one of the suggestions that came up during public comment. Um, I wanted to throw it out there and, and just see how people think about how we could go about doing that. Thank you. And if that's something oh, we want to do. Thank you. I, I addressed uh, Sarah's point about teacher feedback today at the Finance Committee, and that is um, something that I support and that I also indicated in my comment that um, is part of our uh, board goals. And, and um, But my comment that I really want to make is for people that are interested in the budget, um, the, the board considers the input that we receive about um, how we face the goal that the town council sets for us and how we react to that. But just a reminder, the board doesn't set the goal. And so it's important to that um, those individuals with an interest not only reach out to us, but they also reach out to the town council to express their concerns about the budget um, because they are setting uh, the expectations for um, the school's financial situation for the next year and we're reacting to it. And so um, it seems like we're getting a lot of feedback and um, having to redirect people to remind them that that we we are reacting to what we're given and um that's all thank you thank you for making that point um you're absolutely dead on and i would also say that getting the emails um advocating in either direction is also very helpful um part of the role as you know, whether it's school board member or town council, is to hear from our constituents. So please reach out, um, make sure that your voices are being heard um, more than just at the polls. It's really important that we know what matters to you um, so that we can make help to inform those decisions. So just add that in. All right, that's the end of the committee reports. Moving into new business. I guess, oh. Sorry, Leanne, I just kind of want to uh, put a pin in or, or figure out we can take this at a committee level if we want to if you guys want in terms of how we get that feedback additional feedback other than for just asking for it and people emailing us which is which is obviously okay but if we want to do it in a more explicit way um, I just want to know that we have the support of the board to do that and then we can pick up the logistics of that in the finance committee I would say yes um, yep. I do believe that that is something that the committee should take up um, you know, as far, if it was a specific action, you, it would come back to the board with your recommendation of how that action should be taken. Um, but I do believe that we need to be getting that in a formal way as well. Okay. Hillary, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I just didn't want to move on before we had kind of addressed what you were asking, Sarah. I think it, it's valuable to have um, feedback um we have feedback from um it's always valuable to have all different um types of feedback right we it's 
we can get feedback from the community through emails. Obviously, we can get teacher feedback through emails too, but it might be nice to solicit it um, as the comment this afternoon was talking about. Um, I'm fine with that happening at committee level and I just wanted to um, express my support for it. Okay, cool, thanks. We'll pick that up. Sweet. All right, um, new business 10.1. A motion to accept the meeting minutes from our business meeting of April 2nd, 2020 as written. So moved. Second. Okay. Second. Right. I'm gonna assume there's no discussion. Um, I'll give it a second just in case there is. Diana, if you can take the roll call vote. Ms. Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Sidar. Yes. Mrs. Turner. Mrs. Turner. Yes. Okay. I think I heard her. Uh, Ms. Caldwell. Yes. And Mr. Bennett. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Motion passes. All right, 10.2 backpack program donations. I was in awe when I read this when it came out in the packet. Um, mm. It's gonna take a while to read how generous the town of Scarborough is. Um, Kate put together a really nice document. I will not read all the individual people who have made donations because we will be here for hours. Um, but that's just say, oh my gosh, your generosity is overwhelming. Um, but from Kate, I am pleased to report that we have received several generous donations to the school nutrition and backpack programs, which require school board approval. Jim Marshall and his wife, Nancy, have donated $750 each to both the backpack program and the school nutrition program. John Hughes of Ameriprise has been a staunch supporter providing his own and matching corporate funds amounting to $2,730 since mid-March. Julie Caulfield has given multiple donations over the past month, currently amounting to $550. Full Plates Potential has given us two grants, $500 on March 23rd and another $250 on April 20th. Although we require school board approval for these specific donations due to their size, we also want to take a moment to recognize all of our many friends and neighbors who have stepped up with donations and support, reaching out with a helping hand to feed those in need. Attached is a list, and we'll make sure that this is published, um, of all those who have donated since March 20th, making multiple contributions. All told, we have been given a total of $10,838 for the backpack program and $1,150 for school nutrition between March 17th and May 3rd. Kelly Murphy earns a special shout out for organizing a social media fundraising drive on top of her usual efforts to collect food and funds. Project Work Grace and Kiwanis are as always critical partners at the forefront of this work. Maria Connolly brought in a donation of personal products collected from her large friend group. Local businesses, including Hannaford and the Holy Donut have contributed food and neighbors at Wayside Food Pantry in Portland and the South Portland Food Cupboard have reached out to share food and support. Our own staff has been instrumental in rising to the challenge of our pandemic response. Sarah Redman and the bus drivers are organizing and carrying out delivery of food and instructional supplies. Keith Evans and the maintenance crew are helping with pickup of the food supplies. Peter Esposito and Brenda Franklin have coordinated the effort to keep school meals going and to enroll the district in the USDA's expanded school nutrition program. Anne Legage, Patty Bailey, and Tai Shao have been cooking and organizing food at Wentworth Kitchen since the first days of our closure. And more recently, other school nutrition staff are taking on food production in the high school and our middle school kitchens. In the midst of much turmoil and distress, it is especially heartwarming to recognize all the work that our community is doing to pull together in support of those families in need. I appreciate the opportunity to publicly recognize these heroes through the, local, through the board. So that said, um, motion to approve the incredibly donation, uh, incredibly generous donations to both the backpack program and the school nutrition program that have been made from March 17th to May 3rd. So moved. 
So moved. So moved. Second. <laughs> Second. And discussion. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the many generous members of our community who are thinking about their neighbors and um, some of our students are who are being hardest hit by these financial circumstances. I also wanted to share with anybody that's listening the way that they can make a donation if they'd like to. Um, on our website, scarboroughschools.org, under central office, there's a nutrition program and there's a link where you can make an online payment. And um, if you'd like to make a gift of food, it, it um, directs you to where you are able to do that um, because this is gonna be uh, potentially an ongoing problem for our community. And I'm sure we're gonna need replenishment of those funds. Thank you, Alicia. I will, um, I'll just second what Alicia said. I don't really have anything additional except that it's um, kind of humbling to see how our community can come together um, and make this kind of donation for the people uh, who may need it. And um, thank you to everyone. I did have the opportunity to read the entire list. Um, and I know you said you'd publish that, Leanne, but it is amazing how many yeah. people came together to um, make a donation. So thank you to um, all of those people. Agreed. Um, it was overwhelming to look at that list and it's inspiring um, how generous folks are during this time. Thank you so, so much. Um, with that, if we can get a roll call vote. Yeah, Miss, Mrs. Dur Miss Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Scyther. Yes. Mrs. Turner. Yes. Ms. Caldwell. Yes. And Mr. Bennett. I think we lost Mr. Bennett. I think we lost Max. Yeah, I think he's having trouble with connectivity this evening. Nope. Mr. Bennett. We see his face. Am I back? You're back. You're back. <laughs> Where was I gone? Okay, I just saw my whole life flash before my eyes. Um, <laughs> yes. Thank you. And the motion passes unanimously. Okay, motion to uh, item 10.3. A motion to approve the last day of the 2019-2020 school year calendar as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. And discussion. Hillary? Um, I just want to make sure that we are um, more clear about what the actual last um, student day will be in terms of instruction. Um, I know that you had a list in on the slide that had like one, two, three, four. And I, I just think a bullet point needs to be added there to be more clear about when the last instructional day is per grade level. Um, I know, Diane, you said that the high school um, was talking about um, different, uh, um, different end dates like they normally have for seniors versus underclassmen um, and what those dates are and what the dates are for the other grades because I think people are really anxious um, not to just know what the last student day is, but to know when the last day of instruction is. I'm just looking at my calendar. Let's see. We could go June 6th, that Friday. Could be an option. So I think as we discussed, Max, appro Max approved. <laughs> I think as we discussed things, what we talked about was that, that there would be some end of the year activities, although remote, um, with students that uh, might be um, less academically intense, um, and so not to include new learning. Um, so but I we, think that 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 it's legitimate then to say that the end of 
new instruction or the end of online learning is such and such date with you know some activities to fall in the following week i just i i think my hang up here is that people are looking for e either way whether they want it to go longer or whether they want it to go shorter they just want to know when the end date is for online instruction for new instruction um, and I do, I, I think if we don't give them that, I think, I think that the way we have it now is not clear as to when that is. I just wonder if, if um, we need more time with this or, or do you want to just pick a date the first week of June sometime? Or do you want want us to go back and think this over a little more carefully. Well, I mean, I'm a, I, maybe I'm an island. I, what do the other BET members think? I know a lot of students really want to know just like when the last day of school is. And that's just like, they need to know when the last day of school is. So I'll just say that. And again, um, I know, you know, even in Miss Crosby's weekly letter last Friday, I think she made a mention of you know, beginning to plan end of the year activities, uh, even though they were going to be online. And so had made mention of, you know, a number of weeks, like I think it was three more weeks of distance, of real distance learning plans, and then, um, you know, some closing activities. And I think that that's been similarly communicated in a general way um, at, at different levels. But I certainly see your point, Hillary. I've also just promoted Sue um, Catch as a panelist. Sue, you're muted, but you had a comment. I, I just um, wanted to assure Hillary that I have something typed up with specifics on the last day of new learning and a period of time for students to finalize getting work turned in and things for both the senior class and the underclassmen. I'm ready to launch it in tomorrow's weekly letter once it gets approved today. So those specifics are ready and coming once we have board approval. Okay, thank you, Sue. That's great. I And I'm happy to hear that. I just think that it's important for the other phase levels as well to have a very, to be more specific. So if we're all gonna be ending, you know, that whatever that is, Sandy the 5th, that's the Friday, I guess. If that's gonna be the last day of online learning and then the following week is gonna be um, some activities and then the two days for teachers, then, then we need to say that. Thank you. April? Uh, I, think, I think maybe I think about it a little differently. Um, less uh, of a board decision. I feel like for us as a district, we set the last day and Sandy has given us advice that the last day be the 10th. And so it's up to the, just like it is every other year, we have a final day of school and it's up to the buildings to communicate how they're gonna wrap up their school year. Um, and whether that involves distance learning right up until the last day or whether that involves something else, that's never been um, something that we have necessarily discussed as a board. And so I am perfectly comfortable moving forward with Tandy's recommendation. I trust that there will be more information to follow for the parents and the students. Nick? Um, I'd second that. I think, um, you know, Sue Catch's, uh, Principal Catch, excuse me, is one example, but I'm sure the other administrators have been thinking about this as well and um, are ready to communicate out with their buildings. And, and I kind of agree with April. I think that that's kind of outside of the board purview. We set the last day and then our building administrators and our teams and our leadership teams at each of the schools and our teachers, they, they figure out the schedule from there. So I'm comfortable as well endorsing what Sandy has presented, knowing that there's more to happen at the individual phase levels that will be communicated out once we sign off on this, if we sign off on it. But I guess my point is that 
we don't normally, I mean, normally the last day of school is the last day of school, maybe ex with the exception of the seniors in high school. And so my concern is that if the last day of online learning is, you know, like um, Sue said, is the fifth for the high school, but it's the 10th for, you know, K2 and it's a different date for the middle school, you know, all our families are home right now. All these kids are working from their houses. And I just think that it's a good idea to have a, um, and, and if, and I agree that that, sh that can be communicated by the, the um, individual buildings. I just think that it's a good idea to um, have it be the same, except for maybe the seniors as usual. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, I believe we're ready to vote. Can I, can I actually, sorry. <laughs> I was hoping that Diane might be able to um, address the comment that we received um, sure. a little bit yep. more. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, I just sometimes not know, like, you know, where's my place to jump in and be part of the conversation. Um, so there is a question in the Q&A. It was a comment um, from Krista Lass Colbert. Um, and it says, while administration met and consulted with the SEA, we were not in agreement about how the four days would be used and when they would be. Um, I can give you a little bit more background information in regards to that. Um, during our conversation over the few meetings that we had in regards to this, um, there was a request on the part of the SEA to have um, a few of those days uh, first be floated sometime in the summer for teachers to engage um, in independent work or work with their peers at their um, at a time in which they independently designated um, administration had concerns around that uh, for a couple of reasons. One, not knowing about what the uh, regulations or rules might be about when schools can actually be open and what the parameters are going to be around that. And the second concern was not knowing what we're going to be preparing ourselves for in the fall. Um, we certainly, as I said previously, when um, this came up, we certainly recognize the need for teachers to have some independent time to work in their classrooms, but we weren't feeling like we were in a position where we could fully commit to saying that two out of those four days could be um, self-designed because Honestly, we just don't know what we're up against um, with the opening of school yet. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. I think we're ready for a roll call vote. Okay. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Here, motion passes. All right, 10.4, consideration of the 2019-2022 professional staff contract. Um, Hillary, as negotiation chair, can I ask you to kick off the conversation? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, oh, can I start? Oh, sure. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, just so the I've already spoken individually with the board, but I want the community to know as well. Um, I will be recusing myself from the vote tonight um, on the contract based on a perceived or a potential conflict of interest. My father in law is a teacher at the high school. Um, and so not only will I not participate in the conversation, but I also won't be voting. Thank you for that, April. Okay, uh, thanks, April. So um, I, uh, we've had several executive sessions in which um, the negotiations team has been able to update members of the board on um, the tentative agreement that's been signed. Um, and as you heard, um, 
uh, yeah, a couple of days ago, the um, SEA did vote to ratify on their end. So um, the next step is uh, here for us to discuss this. Um, so I am going to um, start by making a, mo a motion to ratify the TA um, as it's presented. Second. So move. Okay, and discussion? Mr. Gill. Um, so I've bounced back and forth on this in my head ever since, well, it's been, it's been a year we've been working on this actually, but this, this ratification vote's kind of been a few months in the making COVID got in the way and, and kind of put, um, one side of the ratification, you know, a little bit delayed for, for no one's fault. And, um, I bounced back and forth on it because, um, you know, we know what our, we don't really know what our budget reality is. We know that every time we seem to ask somebody about it, the reality gets a little bit darker. Um, and that makes this difficult. Um, so I want to be absolutely clear that I am 110% in favor of basically all of the language that's in the contract, all of the things that, um, that our SEA membership uh, made such passionate pleas for and we were able to get in there. Um, I'm also very much in support of their well-deserved um, uh, back pay or retro pay because that year is behind us. FY20 is, well, it's almost behind us. I guess we just decided when it will be behind us, but um, that that work is done and that work is, is, is was hard and this money was well-earned. I'm hung up on year two and three uh, of the salary scale because I'm concerned that with the exercise the town council is doing on the 20th, that we may find ourselves having to cut a significant amount of money out of our budget. Um, and with those raises in place for FY21, that means cutting a lot more programming and or cutting more positions. Um, not that, that won't have to happen either way if that's the route we go down, but being able to think a little bit more um, in the reality of COVID about year two salary in particular, I feel like is um, something that we need to give some serious thought to. Um, you know, we, we had a public comment earlier, it was 100% correct. We did, uh, we went through a fact finding uh, panel that that uh, process was l left us with some recommendations that wound up basically being the contract that we're looking at right now. Um, but all those recommendations happen before this, um, situation that we're in that is a once in a lifetime situation. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm completely aware and sympathetic of the fact that the circumstances, the socioeconomic circumstances of this pending contract have shifted radically in the last few months. Um, and I'm just, I'm at odds with myself. I'll be, I'll be honest, I bounce back and forth about exactly what to do here. Um, and I guess I come down to if our town council is going to ask more of us than they already have, ratifying this contract will be very challenging to meeting those new fiscal goals. Thank you, Nick. Um, I guess I'll go. I'm in the same position you are, Nick. I believe the language is spot on. I believe that um, the raises that are in there are important and they were necessary. Um, more than ever, I recognize just how much goes into the classroom um, and bringing the teachers up to this level was, it was a great moment. Um, I am very concerned um, in so many ways. I, I believe that they deserve this pay raise but I'm concerned at the same time of what council is going to come back with with a number. Um, and it would be very hard to say, this is great, you've gotten this. And now because of what we are faced with having to cut additional folks, it, it's going to be as, the hours are going to increase, the class sizes are going to increase. I don't know how we're going to be able to increase classes if social distancing carries us through in the fall and we have to have additional space. We can't put, 23 or 24 children in a classroom and have that kind of capacity. Our buildings aren't, they're not sized for that in the rooms. Um, this is a really hard conversation. Um, 
I like I said, I believe that this raise is important. I believe that the teachers should be paid this. It is just really a struggle not knowing where we are and where town council is going to put us into um, a situation as far as finances go. So I'm, I'm really stuck on what is the right thing to do um, and want to protect the teachers from this. This is, it's almost like it's two separate conversations and I'm stuttering all over myself because I'm, I'm so conflicted on doing what is best for the students and what is best for the teachers and what is best for the community. This is a no win moment. Um, I, I, I really have to believe that taking care of the staff is super important. Um, they should know how much they're valued and how much we need them here in order to be successful in this district. And that is really where the hardest part is for me. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Alicia. Um, okay, uh, thank you. This has been um, a real emotional, um, conversation that I've been having with myself and and um, I think it's putting the uh, um, emotional side of me um, my my real strong desire to want to give the teachers what they deserve um, what they're worth what they um, they're, they're our friends, they're our neighbors they're teaching our children I mean it, it, <laughs> I, I want nothing more than to approve the contract tonight versus my concern about what what we could be handed and and the impact that that could have on our kids and the cuts that um, we could be faced and and potential job loss of those same individuals and I just um, I I want to do I guess what what feels easy to me which is to approve it and the the real hard decision right now is um to say i'm not ready because i'm not i'm not because i don't have all of the information from town council and i'm really worried about what the financial implication will be it's it's a true morton's fork um there there's no winning choice in my mind right now and i i my thought is I'd like to take some time and hear from the town council about their goals. I'm hoping that they'll stop where they are, that we can make some cuts that that um, doesn't eliminate a, um, a ton of jobs and uh, we can proceed with with the teachers raises that they that they deserve. Um, but I, I just I don't want to say no. I, I I'd rather take some time and wait for that for that um, goal to come from the town council. So my hope is that we can um, prolong this so that we can get that information from from town council. And my hope is that we can address the financial circumstances in a way that's fiscally responsible. Um, and and then um, go back and and work with with the the teachers and I'm really sad to be in this position today, but it, it's where we are. Sarah. Uh, yeah, thanks, Alicia. Um, I'm feeling similar to how Alicia's feeling. Um, I mean, it feels awful. Um, I think, you know, our goal as a board and as individuals is to protect and do what's best for our students. And I think as some of the comments that were made in the finance committee and made earlier today, like what's best for our students um, in a lot of ways is keeping and maintaining the incredible staff that we have. And so um, while I am incredibly supportive of this contract and know and want to vote yes tonight i do i am also conscious of the fact that uh we have a workshop in two weeks where town council wants to see what zero percent looks like um and to go from where we are now to zero percent is going to be probably around two million dollars in additional cuts and there is no way i mean 
that our teachers make up the largest percentage of our budget and there's just no way that we can get to 2 million realistically without doing cuts and so uh, I think we just need we need more information and we need more guidance um, on every aspect and I think we've been saying this town council as well is whatever the goal is that you decide we need some more data we need to know like how you're arriving at whether it's two percent or zero percent and then we'll tell you what that means from our side um, so having a little bit more time and clarity i think after that workshop will be helpful in us figuring out what the best way is to go forward um so if there's an op with the teacher's contract so if there's an opportunity um to to table it um I would be I would be supportive of that. Hillary. Uh, before I say anything, I want to make sure Kristen, do you want an opportunity to say anything? I don't think I have much to add that hasn't already been said. I share all the sentiments. I would love nothing more than to say yes to the contract, but I think we need to, we do need more information and maybe a little bit more time to make sure we are looking at the full picture of what we're dealing with. So, um, so I'm kind of hearing a, a red thread, right? Is that what they call it? Um, that people are maybe uncomfortable because we don't have um, all the information that we might normally have at this time. Um, town council, like Sarah said, town council is asking to look at 0% and um, they haven't made that a directive, but they haven't made a directive at all yet. And I, I'm in the same boat. I, I have no problem um, with the TA except the salary scales for year two and three. We, I, I agree with you, we don't have the information we need um, to be able to to accept that right now. So I, I is this right, Leanne? Can I make a motion to table? Yes, you now? may. So may. I guess I would make a motion just based on what I'm hearing from everybody um, to table the ratification due to the fiscal uncertainty caused by the coronavirus um, until such a time as we have a budget number from the town council. We need a second Can before you can talk. Second. Oh, second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nick? I just wanted to ask a question. So um, I, lo I love the idea of tabling this because I do think I'm, I'm a big fan of evidence-based decision-making and without the evidence, it's, it's hard to make a decision. So. But my question is this, I, I know that our professional staff are watching us tonight and they, and they want to see something from us in the, in the realm of, I don't know what the word, like some kind of a, a endor not, endorsement's not the right word, I'm not thinking of the right word, but could we possibly amend, I, I guess it'll be amending the amendment and I'm asking a question to say exactly what kind of you just said, Hillary, which is like, maybe we could approach the SA leadership and say, would you be willing to basically, we'll approve the language, we'll give you the retro, let's get that in the mail as soon as we can, our families need it, but let's keep year two and three out of this because we don't have the information yet. I don't know if that makes this too complicated, but I'm just, I'd love to find a way to get those retro checks in the hands of the teachers. Nick, for that, I think there's um, oh, pieces. Saying. Sorry, I'm just going procedurally, Hill. I'm sure. so sorry. I was I was just going to say that. <laughs> there, my thought is this: that we go through the motion to table, um, and then there is a new motion that will come out after that has been approved. Oh, okay. I I think Nick that like part of the discussion of tabling it is what you just brought up. I I'm not interested in holding back the retro pay. And I'm, I'm certainly, you know, we have this like June 30th kind of date hanging over our heads and, um, and I would rather pay them the retro pay that they have already earned in a year when none of this had happened. Um, and I, I guess my, 
my feeling is if we did table it, I would want to have, um, I would want to find, figure out, I, I, I think we, I guess, right. I guess if we table it, I would want to find a way and that would probably be um, a discussion with the SEA on accepting, you know, the, the retro, I guess, without a, without a, um, a fully ratified contract. I mean, they have their ratification, but um, ours is tabled or might be tabled based on this this motion. But but like you said, um, I, I you know, in my opinion, we're just we're holding that money. It's it's theirs, and I would love to get it to them and have that not be an issue and not have that June thirtieth deadline hanging overhead because you know, honestly, the information that we're looking to get is delayed because the entire process of, um, of, of the budget has been extended, right? You know, like, so um, normally we might have a directive from the town council at this time, but we don't yet. And we might not for another couple weeks. Um, that's it. Any other discussion based on the table? Okay. Diane, if you wouldn't mind taking a roll call vote to table the motion. Sure. Ms. Jorgen? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Abstain. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Bennett? I'm also going to abstain. Thank you, motion passes. Um, Nick, to your earlier point, um, you're absolutely right. It was never an intention to um, withhold or not pay out retro pay, and that is incredibly important to this board. Um, and just for that matter, um, I'd like to make it a motion to direct the board negotiator to confirm the SEA agrees to the payment of retroactive salary increases for fiscal year 20, even though the TA has not yet been fully ratified. Second. Discussion on the, the new motion. I'll go ahead and open it. I think this is um, the right thing right now. Um, I wish it could be a full ratification. I know that as a negotiation team, um, you all plus Amy have worked so hard to get us to this point. Um, we're appreciative of all the work that the SEA negotiator, negotiators have done as well. Um, nobody ever foresee or foresaw um, this pandemic and what it was going to bring as far as uncertainty and financial um, distress. This is not where any of us wanted to land today. Um, and with that, I, I'm good with what I'm saying. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none. We can take a roll call vote. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Abstain. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Abstain. Motion passes. Moving on to 10.5, 10.5.1, the appointment of a middle school principal. Sandy, if you wanted to make the motion and you're on mute. Still 
<laughs> Sandy. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. I make a re recommendation that the school committee approve Kathy Corral as the new principal of Scarborough Middle School. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? I'd love to open it off and say congratulations, Kathy. Well deserved. I just second that and say congratulations to Kathy. Kathy was my sixth grade homeroom teacher uh, when we were in the portables at the old Wentworth. Um, and so it is with great joy that I would approve her for the middle school principal. Congratulations, Kathy. Thank you. Can I say something now? Okay. Um, I just <laughs> want to say how honored and excited I am to be able to work with the middle school staff who is my family and the students and the parents and our school community. Um, everyone has just been so supportive and um, you know, today when Sandy sent out the letter, I received um, emails from staff throughout the district. I mean, we are just one big family and it, they, their comments brought tears to my eyes. Um, and I really, I need to thank Joanne Sizemore. You know, as a, a young teacher, she encouraged me to take on leadership roles and mentored me throughout the years. Um, and, you know, I, I want to continue to do that with other staff, um, but I'm just, ex I'm very excited. So thank you. Um, Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. And there was a Q&A from Kelly Mullen Martin saying congratulations as well. And with that, if we could do a roll call vote. Ms. Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes, with congratulations. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes, and congratulations. Mr. Bennett? Thank you. Yes, and congrats. Motions unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, is there a motion to adjourn tonight? So moved. So moved. Second. Great. And we'll end it with a roll call vote to uh, adjourn. Ms. Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Ms. Catalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Scyther. Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.